You can picture this young, hungry Steve Jobs working out of his mom's garage. He's desperate to sell these computers. He didn't mind almost begging. This letter opens, I hope you get this, as it's the third time it's been sent out. He really got out there and he pushed it and it paid off for him. Today, we're going to be talking about some highlights from our upcoming sale, which opens on December 6th and closes on December 13th. I'm going to take you through the stories of five incredible objects that we'll be offering them. This amazing object is an original, fully operational Enigma One. During World War II, the Nazis requisitioned the production of these. They were used on the ground by the army and by the Kriegsmarine, the, the Navy. Now this, as I said earlier, is fully operational. So if I hit one of these buttons, you will see something light up. What is happening there is it is encoding the message that they were then sent via Morse code from a ship to the ground, from a bunker to another. If we open it up, you can see that the main and most important component of the machine are these rotors. The way that the messages were encrypted and decrypted is every morning you would set up, what's the position of these cables? What rotors are you going to put in there? What order are they going to be in? And what letters are they going to be set to? Once we were able to break this code, that changed everything. And the code for these machines was broken at Bletchley Park, led by codebreakers such as Alan Turing, the Wrens, as they were called, it was mostly women who were doing this code breaking. And what Turing did is he built uh, what's known as the bomb. It's a giant mechanical computer that could make the calculations for all of the permutations for this code. If they had not broken the Enigma code, the world would be a very, very different place. They're incredibly important historic artifacts. What we have here is something incredibly rare. This is an original Kriegsmarine Signal book. This was a book made in Germany in 1940. It was printed in Berlin. And it had all of the secrets of the signals sent during World War II by the German Navy. This book saw combat, as you can see from the covers, we've got remnants of bullet holes that go straight through the text block. So it's very similar in concept to the purpose of the Enigma machine. This was to ensure that signals that were sent back and forth were not intercepted by the enemy. This is really a primary source. It's not just a printed book. It has manuscript notations throughout, and it has all of these slips that have been added in to change the text in response to what was happening on the ground at the time. Now, jumping across the Atlantic, we're now going to look at what was going on in the U.S. at the same time. This is an incredibly important historic letter written by Richard Feynman, who won the 1965 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on quantum electrodynamics. This is a letter he wrote to his mother from New Mexico, where he was working on developing the atom bomb. And this letter describes in detail his eyewitness account of the Trinity test which is the first detonation of the atom bomb. The tone of the letter is one of elation. You know, we, we, we can't believe it, we've done this, we figured this out, we're going to end the war. Years later, in other letters written by Feynman, you see more of tones of regret. What we have here is that most coveted of prizes, the Nobel. And this is the 1927 Nobel Prize in Physics awarded to Arthur Compton, who was a key figure during the Manhattan Project. This prize was awarded to him for his discovery of what is now known as the Compton Effect, which confirms the particle nature of light. Now, this was something that confirmed discoveries made by Albert Einstein six years earlier when Einstein wrote about the quantum theory of light. And something that's really interesting about Nobel Prizes in general is, as an object, if you were to melt them down, God forbid, they would all be the same thing, the same weight in gold. And yet they all sell for a different amount of money. The prices have ranged anywhere from 80,000 to five and a half million dollars. And that's why I love selling these because it's all about telling the story behind them and not about the weight in gold. All right. This is a portfolio 
put together in 1976, which contains a letter written by a young Steve Jobs trying to hawk his wares. Now, early in 1976, Steve Jobs and Woz both hand-built the first Apple computers ever made, the Apple One. They sat down and they built these motherboards by hand in Steve Jobs' garage. The first place he went to was the bite shop in Palo Alto, trying to convince them to buy maybe one, maybe two, and the bite shop actually bought 50. They took the money that they made from those boards and went and bought the parts to make another 200 Apple Ones. This letter is written in October of 1976, and it's sent to a computer store owner, and it's Jobs explaining what his product is. And you can see he's, he's kind of desperate to get these sold. I mean, he says, one more time, I hope you get this as this is the third time I have been sending this to you. I mean, he was relentless. And this is an amazing thing here. This is the price list, and he has included discounts for people on the back. The original price of the Apple One was $666.66. You can see here he's discounted it for this fellow at $500. Behind me, you can see this amazing rainbow neon Apple sign. That's something that would have been sent to authorized retailers of Apple material that they would have hung in their window to let people know that they were selling Apple products. Be sure to come in and see these in person. Our exhibitions are free and open to the public. Don't miss them. The sale closes on December 13th, so make sure you see these items. They're all things that you would normally see in a museum. Very few people will ever get the chance to see objects like this in person, let alone touch them. So come in and see us.